Hello Maths Learners, in this video we're going to go over the next type of factorizing which is known as difference of two squares. I abbreviate it to dots. If you missed the other videos on factorizing, I've done highest common factor and I've done highest common factor where the common highest common factor is a bracket. You need to check that out in this playlist. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more maths with Miss M. Let's go and learn about dots. Now, how do I know when I'm factorizing if I must do dots? Well, first of all, you always try highest common factor first. If that doesn't work and you have this checklist in your brain and you see, wait a second, my algebraic expression meets these criteria, then you know it's dots. Let's have a look at the checklist. Now, first of all, in my checklist, I have two terms in the expression. So if I look at the expression and there's two terms, I know it's dots. Here's an example, by the way, x squared minus 16. I must factorize that using dots. How do I know? I have two terms in the expression. Remember terms are separated or plus or minus. So that's a tick over there. There's a minus sign separating the two terms. Again, I can tick that off my checklist. Then square numbers, i.e. perfect squares. So they can be square rooted. Yes, they can. Think about 16. What is the square root of 16? It gives me four. If it was x squared minus 15, then I cannot do dots. I cannot do difference of two squares because 15 cannot be squared. It gives me a fraction, not a fraction, sorry, a decimal. <laughs> and then our last criteria is even exponents. So if we look at this example over here, I've got a two. Two is an even number, therefore I've got even exponents. If it's x to the power of four, x to the power of six, x to the power of eight, we can do dots. If it's x to the power of three, cannot do dots. All right, now we've established we can do dots. Now, how do I do this? We've got x squared minus 16 is my very basic example. We've established that it is dots or difference of two squares. Now, how do I actually factorize it? Well, the setup is always the same. We've got two brackets next to each other like that, touching, which means multiplied by each other. The one bracket gets a plus sign, the other gets a minus. The order doesn't matter, so it can be the first bracket with the minus sign and then the second bracket with the plus, or it can be the first back bracket with the plus and then the minus, doesn't matter. Then you square root. So what I mean by that is we look at my expression, x squared. x squared would be x and x because x multiplied by x. Remember, you're always going to check by multiplying out. So in this case, applying FOIL, multiplying two um, brackets like that. x multiplied by x is x squared. Why? Because if I add the exponents, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 1, I get x to the power of 2. So it's going to be x, x. Why do the x's go in that position? Because in my expression, my x's, my x squared is on the left. So my x's need to be on the left. Then I've got 16. What is the square root of 16? We've already said it. It's 4. So I put a 4 over there and a 4 over there. How can I check if this is correct? Well, like I said, we can multiply out. So this is multiplying out binomials. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. Positive 4 multiplied by x is positive 4x. Positive 4 multiplied by negative 4 is negative 16. If you guys don't know how to do this, you need to subscribe because I will have videos in the future on this. Then we've got negative 4x plus 4x. Negative 4 plus 4. That gives me 0. They cancel. Therefore, I'm left with x squared minus 16, which is exactly what I started with. So I know I factorized correctly. Let's do another example. In this example, I look at it. I see. Okay, I've got 4x squared minus 25. Two terms. 4x squared minus 25. First of all, can I take out a highest common factor? So can I find a number that can divide into 4 and 25 without a remainder? No, I can't. Then we need to analyze if I have dots or not. I can't take out a highest common factor. So do I have two terms? Yes, I do. Do I have a minus separating them? Yes, I do. Do I have square numbers? Yes. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 25 is 5. So yes, I do. Do I have even exponents? 
Yes, I do. I've got a 2, which is an even exponent. Right, so we've established its dots. Let's do our setup. Two brackets, plus in the one, minus in the other. Then, let's see. In our first term, I've got 4x squared. So, what is the square root of 4? It is 2. So, I'm going to have 2 over here and 2 over here. Why does it go on the left-hand side of my signs? Well, because 4x squared is on the left-hand side of my negative sign. It's my first term. Then, what is x squared? So, what multiplied by what would give me x squared? Well, x multiplied by x would give me x squared because, as we know, we add the exponents. Then we do the same, but for the 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. So we've got 5 over there and 5 over there. Again, you can check to see if you are correct. You can check using FOIL or multiplying out binomials. Let's do another example. First of all, can I take out a highest common factor? Well, no, I cannot. So let's move on. Is this dots? Yes, there's two terms. Yes, there's a minus sign separating them. Now, this tricks people. Do I have square numbers? Yes, 1 is a square number, perfect square. What's the square of 1? Square root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 equals 1. So, I do have square numbers and I do have even exponents. So, it is dots. Two brackets, plus sign in the one, minus sign in the other x squared. What will give me x squared? x multiplied by x will give me x squared. And then the square root of 1 is 1 and 1. Again, you can check by multiplying out. Let's do one more example. Now this one, guys, is quite a long one. Take a look, and I want you guys to think. Can I take out a highest common factor? Remember, we always start by saying, can I take out a highest common factor? Highest common factor is king, which means I need to try it first. Yes, I can take out a highest common factor. Look at my two terms. They don't have variables in common, but I can take a 3 out. 3 can divide into 3 and 3. <laughs> I can take 3 out. I need to do this first. If I take a 3 out and I open up my leftover brackets, which I've done over here, then I go 3x to the power of 8 divided by 3, which leaves me with x to the power of 8. I go negative 3y to the power of 8 divided by 3, which leaves me with negative y to the power of 8. I've taken out my highest common factor. So highest common factor taken out, step 1, done. But then I said, you cannot stop here. Why? Look inside the brackets. And I always need you guys to do this. If you look inside the brackets, you can see that I can actually factorize that more fully. It's not factorized fully. I can do dots. How do I know? Look inside the brackets. Do I have two terms inside the brackets? Yes, I do. Remember, we're considering this expression inside the brackets now. We're going to leave the three where it is. We've already taken that out. Inside the brackets, I have two terms in that expression. There's a minus separating them. Square numbers. Yes. I can't see the numbers, but there's a coefficient of 1 in front of this x and a coefficient of 1 in front of that y. And we know that the square root of 1 is 1, so I've got square numbers. And yes, I have even exponents. 8 and 8, those are even exponents. So, how do I do this? Okay, so step 1 was I took out the highest common factor, which I already did. There's my answer after I did that. Then I realized I can do dots. Now, when you do dots or difference of two squares, we're going to leave the 3 where it is. It can't disappear. It can't fall away. Now, because we're doing dots, this bracket over here is essentially going to turn into two brackets. Remember, the framework for dots, the setup for dots is always the same. Two brackets. Plus in the one, minus in the other. Now, in this case, we have no coefficients. We have one, but we know we don't need to write one. The square root of one is one, and we don't need to write that. So we're going to consider the exponents. I've got x to the power of 8 and y to the power of 8. Now, x to the power of what multiplied by x to the power of what will give me 8? x to the power of 4 multiplied by x to the power of 4 will give me x to the power of 8. Why? 
because x to the power 4 multiplied by x to the power 4, if I multiply, I add exponents. 4 plus 4 is x. Same with the y. y to the power 4 and y to the power 4. Now you might go, awesome, cool, this was a nice one, I'm done. No, you're not. You're not done. Why? Think about it. Okay, look at the first brackets. I definitely cannot do dots again in the first brackets. And the immediate thing that should jump out at you is the fact that there's a plus sign here. If there's a plus sign there, you cannot do dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that as is. But in the second bracket, if you look carefully, you can do dots again. How do you know? I've got two terms. I've got a minus separating them. Square numbers, because the coefficients are 1 and 1 are perfect squares. And 4, that's even exponents. So what you do is you rewrite the first bracket as is. It's not going to change. It's not going to expand. We're not going to factorize more, but it needs to stay in your answer. And my second bracket, I need to write out twice. Why? Because this one is essentially breaking up again because I'm doing dots. Now remember our framework for dots, plus in the one, minus in the other, doesn't matter which order you do the plus and the minus. Then x to the power of what multiplied by x to the power of what will give me x to the power of 4? Well, it's going to be x to the power of 2 and x to the power of 2. Why? Because 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Same thing with the y's. y to the power of 2, y to the power of 2. And again, you might look at that and you might say, cool, I'm done. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, why am I not done? Okay, so the first bracket here can't do anything. There's a plus sign there. The second bracket can't do anything. There's a plus sign there. But let's consider this third bracket. I've got two terms. I've got a minus between the terms. I've got square numbers. I've got even exponents. Two is an even number. I can do dots again for the third time. So I rewrite the first part as is, doesn't change. I can't go further, but it still needs to feature in my answer. Then this bracket over here, this third bracket, it's going to become two more brackets because I'm doing dots again. Plus in the one, minus in the other. Now, in this case, it's going to be x to the power of 1 multiplied by x to the power of 1 will give me x to the power of 2. And y to the power of 1 multiplied by y to the power of 1 will give me y to the power of 2. Now I'm done. Now I can no longer do dots again. And the reason being is because I have no more even exponents in this last bracket over here. I might have two terms, I might have a minus separating them, I might have square numbers, but I don't have even exponents. So now I'm finally done. <laughs> if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and please comment what you'd like to see next. I make videos based on these comments, so please remember to pop them down below. Bye everyone!